Quick video about the anatomy of the faders that you get in Porter Studios. That's what I mostly work on, though I imagine this will apply to most faders and most mixers, or at least analog mixers uh, made before the year 2000. What you'll have is a conductive plate, a couple of tabs that uh, solder into the board below. They're just to keep them secure. And uh, in the case of this Minoro one, we've got a single input and uh, an output and a ground. This one's stereo, so uh, we've got two inputs, two grounds and two outputs. The same number, that is two attaching pins down here. There's a casing on top, and inside there's a slider. The slider will typically have like a little metal spring that keeps it tight to the top of the case uh, with a plastic separator so that that uh, metal spring doesn't conduct to this metal casing which is usually connected to circuit ground. It's connected to circuit ground by uh, the way that it will touch these plates at the bottom. The pins come around the plastic and touch this plate which will be sat underneath the conductive plate like that. And it's only these little surfaces that are conductive, the silver ones that I'm pointing to here. This is a stereo slider. What these brushes do is uh, create a bridge between one area which varies in its resistance along its length and another area which is the same, well, has very little resistance. So what happens is when the fader is up at the top, um, it's bridging between a low resistance area and a low resistance area but when it's at the bottom it's bridging between a high resistance area and a low resistance area so the further down it is the greater the resistance from the input pin to the output pin ways that these can fail you can see that the uh, aperture in these this one's got a, like a kind of rubber protective cover um, that, you know, a lot of them are open like this. If it's left in a dusty environment, a smoky environment, or someone spills a drink, then uh, all that dirt's going to get in here. That's why you might pry this open to clean it. That dirt and dust can accumulate on these little brushes. So sometimes you can clean that off. But sometimes if that liquid and dirt sits for long enough, um, these little brushes will become brittle. And so they'll actually snap off. And if they snap, then you, you can feel really rough in there. It can actually scrape these little sort of conductive strips on this side, this little circuit board in here. Um, also, I have seen it where the metal from the input or output pins, if it's got enough liquid on there, that'll actually corrode. So there's no electrical continuity between these input and output pins and uh, these strips here. So if you open them up and you can clean it, great. Um, if these are scratched and worn or there's corrosion here, sometimes you'll see rust. Depends on the design, um, but from here to here, if there's actually rust at the tips here, then um, usually the fader's no good. They don't seem to be making these anymore, so it is a matter of getting a donor if uh, the brushes are broken or the base is actually corroded. How can you test whether they're passing signal? Well, here is a fader Let's see what is this 50k yeah so this is like a channel fader from a porter one it's a weird one this because um it's in a stereo housing but it is actually a mono one so um it's that's the input and then the far right of these is the output so if i put that up um then here i've got my meter i'll put it into the continuity tester mode you can see i've got these banana plug to alligator clip going into it so when i connect So when I pull it down, the resistance goes above 50 ohms, and so it stops beeping. But at the top, it's beeping. Okay. So if you can figure out which is the input pin and the output pin, usually you can do that test in circuit. So, uh, you know, I could touch, it doesn't, wouldn't really matter which way around, I could touch those in circuit and test it that way. So if I touch those, I get continuity and then I, I know that that fader is good. If I'm not getting that beep, then I do want to desolder that, open it and see whether it's just dirty or corroded. If it's corroded or the brushes are broken, then I probably need to find a replacement for it. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Bye-bye.